Hello, I'm Mix Mars and Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we'll be working on this HHH25 Honda four stroke um, single bladed head trimmer, which I picked up as part of a job lot from a fellow who went over to all battery powered equipment. This head trimmer does work and does run, however, it's a little bit bubbly, a little bit boggy, which is what he did say it was originally, and also I dare say the oil will want changing as well. So if you want to know how to clean a carburetor or and change your oil on this one of these types of Honda um, four stroke head trimmers, then continue watching, this could be the video for you. So without further ado, let's get down dirty. Let's get this Honda HHH25 carburetor cleaned, all changed, and see if we can't improve its running quality. Right, on these little Honda four strokers, um, the best way to, to do the all on these is to actually tip the machine right up onto its bum, so the machine is absolutely level, just like that, okay? Uh, that's the best way to do it. Once it's up on, on, on the side, I do recommend to actually balance it on the table edge. That's what we, that's what we actually recommend. Put it on my table edge just like that, but you won't be able to see it. So up like that is no different. And just literally undo this um, little little plug here. Now there won't be a minimum and maximum on here. What you'll have is, is literally just the bottom of the thread. So what you want to do, you want to make sure that the the threads on this machine are actually right on the very, very, on the very bottom. So these are it's just slightly overfilled, if anything, because it all is just starting to come out. But that's no problem for me, as long as you do have oil in it, which we have plenty. Um, just make sure that you just drain it all out, tip the machine up onto its end just like so, fill it up with oil up to the bottom of the threads and then uh, that would be your oil done on this machine. So quick, easy, simple. This is slightly overfilled, not by a great deal uh, and the oil actually looks very, very good. So uh, we'll be doing the oil change a bit later on anyway, but first things first is to get this machine fired up, revved up, so you can actually hear what it's actually doing. Let me move this cylinder out the way, that's got to go in for sharpening. Let's just fire this little puppy up. Uh, primer bulb should be on it somewhere. There's a primer bulb uh, at the back here. And then we'll choke it. That is priming. And we'll choke it, choke it, poke it. Chokes underneath, choke all the way forward. Uh, set the machine to start, which it is. That's on start. And we'll give it a quick pull. Oh, that was on start, there you go. Right, turn the choke off. A bit more choke. Choked off. Running, it sounds okay, but when you top end it out, there you go. And it cuts out. So that's the problem we're having, which should be simply fixed with a carburetor clean. That's the general idea. Um, so let's get the surfaces all tied up, cleaned up, and then we'll have this carburetor off best we can. And um, I'll show you how to do that. Right, so we're good enough to start. On the front of it, on the side of this machine, just here, there's a little tiny clip. You just got to squeeze that in just to, just to remove the, uh, the old filter. It's, a, it's like the old, what you get on the old rucksacks. Very similar to that. Just pinch it in, I like to get a pair of pliers on it. Looks like it's been there a little while. You know, squeeze in and then just uh, tease it out. And that airbox cover will actually come off in your hand. Got a nice air filter on there. This actually looks quite clean in here, to be fair. I think it's just been sat for a little while. That's what I'm thinking. Um, looks like a 10 mil, possibly. Couldn't be an eight. Yeah, it's an eight. It's an eight. Let's grab an eight mil socket. Oh, because I had a 10 mil out. 10 goes in. That'd be the eight there. And all I want to do is just literally undo the two bolts that are secure in the carburetor on. One there, and one just there. And all I'm gonna do is just remove one bolt there. And that one there, 
put them down, put them to one side, so I'm getting myself a little tiny, you know me, I've got my little tiny Chinese takeaway tubs, so I put them in there, just for, uh, for safekeeping. A uh, little tiny plate to come off there as well, that can come off, just so we don't lose no bits. That now start to loosen all this carb front box up, so that can come away. Put that to one side. Now there's the actual carb exposed itself. We've got a couple of bits to just to remove, a few fuel lines to remove on top and bottom. And we've also got to undo this uh, throttle assembly and also uh, take the, the, the throttle cord off as well. To remove the throttle cord, it's quite simple. Just by hand, before you take anything else apart, just manually operate the, the throttle open and then the cable will drop down just like so. Once it's dropped down, get a hold of it, take it out and drop it out like so. That's as easy as that. Anyone can do that, even me. Next, we're gonna get a 10mm. It's gonna loosen up uh, this front um, nut here. That will actually remove the throttle housing away from the carburetor, and that's now come away. And pretty much now, as long as it's not to take the carburetor out, all bar the fuel lines. Just going to move that gasket out the way off the back. I've just got two fuel lines to remove. I'm just going to release the pressure off the cap as well. I'm going to grab my non-grippy pliers and try to remove these fuel lines without causing any further damage. The grey one is going to go uh, on, it's just split slightly, but that's no problem. It's come off the bottom of the tank now. Lovely. So that needs repairing. This pipe is actually quite hard, so actually I will be replacing all of these fuel lines. Yeah, this pipe's really hard. Oh, that's come right off. Let's tip that one to its side. Because the fuel lines have come right off now. Let's take the carby off. That fuel line there. So grey one was actually on the bottom. Let's take this one off here. That's that one gone. And we've got one just here. So I've got brand new fuel lines to go on, so it's no, it's no big deal, no drama. They were quite hard and quite perish, so we want to take them off. It's actually the card ready we want to get to. A little tiny silly clip on there, which we're going to remove. Like so, and then we've got this bit of fuel pipe to take off, which I can't get access to. Come on, Mr. Fuel Lead. Off you come, there you go. All right, so there's a the carburetor off. Um, I'm gonna put new fuel lines on. I'll check the fuel lines for condition inside the tank uh, once we get a bit further down the line. But now get rid of this machine, dry my hands off, and we'll have this carburetor on the bench and take the carburetor apart and uh, see what's inside the carburetor. Okay, carburetor now on the top of the bench and we're gonna to start to remove the primer bulb assembly first. So a Phillips or flathead, whatever you've got to hand. I'm just gonna Start to undo these. Get a little bit of a wipe off in there first, Mick. This one's a bit cleaner than what it should be. So undo four of those. And that's the fourth screw now just coming out. We can now remove the primer bulb assembly. Just take that off very, very gently. There's a bit of dirt inside there as well. Very nice. And then here's our diaphragm. As you can tell by the state of a diaphragm, it's got a little tiny bit of crisp to it. It's quite solid. So we're gonna be looking at changing the diaphragm on the gasket and diaphragm on this one, especially the diaphragm at least. But I wanna remove the actual diaphragm itself a whole lot of part of it to come without damaging anything. Just a diaphragm would be good, please, Mick. Keep the gasket. There's a diaphragm. Lovely. Now I need to find I've got one of those because that's a bit it's a bit special. We shall see. Um a little tiny screw in here to come out as well, which should be a needle. Let's loosen him off and out will come the needle and assembly. So there's a little tiny screw, so I don't want to lose that. And out comes the rocker and then inside there will be the needle. Here's a spring, don't lose a spring. And inside there's a little tiny, tiny needle. There it is, take that out. 
that's good. That's that part done. Well, I can now come out of this side here and I want to remove this part here because I want to try and get inside, inside here in particular. Like so. And inside here is a little tiny screen. Can you see it? Just there. Now inside that screen, there is a little tiny bit of gunk. I can see it from here already. So I'm just going to spray that with WD-40 just to clean that screen up. Because that is the problem. It is all the gunk is just down in here. You can see it. And that is the main reason why this little carby is not working. Now I may even decide to remove that screen because it does look particularly dirty. Let me just grab a, uh, a dental pick. Two seconds. Right, it's so got a little tiny screen. I'll remove that reed. I don't want to upset that too much. A little tiny plastic collar on there. That'll come out. So that's got to be cleaned. I'll give it a nice clean underneath there. Up through into there. There'll be a hole in there. Just there. That's where the hole is. Lovely. I'll give that a little tiny clean as well. Beautiful, put it to one side, and then on the other side of a carb, uh, on this piece, there will be a lovely little screen just here. So with my dental pick, it's going to grab hold of it and just tease that out. Ever so gently, here it comes. That'll come out, and I'm going to go for a clean in there as well. And whilst we're in here, is anywhere where there's a hole, we're literally going to clean around. That dirt in there. Turn it around. So I'm just being a bit meticulous here. We're literally just cleaning up anywhere and everywhere where there is a hole. Just being really thorough. Right, I'm now gonna get a little bit of tissue. A uh, bit of blue roll, let me grab that two seconds. Okay, a bit of blue roll, and the reason I brought the blue roll in is so I can literally just clean these pieces off, and once they've been cleaned, and I know they're clean, I can put them onto the blue roll, so they're out of the way. And clean the screen off. I'll blow it through both ways. Put the screen over there as well. Down you go, Mr. Screen. A little tiny collar here. Put that down. So it's all gone top of the blue roll, which is clean. Good, so clean to there. Anywhere, we're, anywhere you can get in into all the crevices, just tidy it all up, clean it all back. So all looks good. Right now that bit's done there. I now want to get into this section up here, which is part of the throttle. I want to get into there if we can. Undo this little tiny screw. Once I clean this bit, I'm going to put this one back. <laughs> it's a bit of a pickle to get into because of the because uh, of a screw screws in the way of the uh, throttle assembly, but you can get in there. Mm 
because I need to get all the way in here. This is all absolutely filthy underneath here. I've got a little flat head in there. There it comes. I think we're there. Nearly there. I'm just give it a bit of a clean. It's all filthy in there. Right down through the jet side. There's a hose inside there as well. See that hose? We can literally just get right up inside there, put the rat on top. Clean all that out. Put that just to one side for now. A good clean up here. Absolutely anywhere and everywhere. Again, we're just going to clean. I might give that quick little blast off with my uh, air compressor. I'll try and get up into there. Okay. All right, I'm happy with that. That's nice and clean. So now I can go back onto there and make sure that the needle goes all the way down through the center of the straw in the middle of a carb. Seat it down and then get your screw and then just screw that back in and that's well cleaned. Just like so. Let me get the oven screwed down and I'll come back to you once I've done so. Right, carburetor now been fully cleaned and we're now good to reinstate. So first thing to do is to put the, um, the little screen back into here, which is a little tiny mesh screen. That just sits into there like so. And all I'm gonna do is just gonna get a really, really small socket. Okay. Tiny little socket. Smaller the better. And just, just sit that in there just like that. Lovely. So that's in. And then on this one here, we've got a little tiny plastic plug that goes into there. I'm just going to get my Phillips screwdriver and just seat that in. Just like that. I think there's a little squirt in case we don't introduce any dirt. I think. Oh, that's good, doesn't it? That's very nice. That can sit onto there. We're happy with that. So now I've just got to um, figure out um, a diaphragm for it. So there's the old diaphragm there, looking a bit crusty. And I've got a new diaphragm here. Now, exactly the same from what I can see, a little, a little bit different. But what's important is your nipples. You must make sure your nipples are the same size. Because if you've got different size nipples, you're going to be in trouble, right? So make sure your nipples are erect and as they should be. Um, now what we've got to do is now I've got to put this diaphragm onto here. Oh, hang on, what am I doing? What am I saying? Spot the mistake. I've got to put my little tiny spring in. This is a fiddly bit. Little tiny spring goes onto here, like that. Sit about there. Now it, this is difficult because you've got to get the needle in as well. Oh, there's a needle. My hands, I tell you, my hands are not built for this. All right, let's give it a bit of a clean. I'm just going to grab hold of that needle and very gently and put that needle in into to all. I like to use, this is what I use dental picks for because my fingers are too big now. With the use of dental picks, I can manipulate. Now, this is the hard bit. You've got to put this little tiny rocker on that's got to go underneath the needle and that little tiny divot on the inside there has got to go on top of a spring. So just force it down to position, hold it, pin it, and don't let go now. And then just manipulate this piece into here so it's well seated. 
like that. Now, once you've got it in, keep your finger on that, don't let go. You want that little tiny baby screw now, little tiny tiddly one. Magnetic screwdrivers are a godsend. You gotta have them. And then that little tiny screw can go into there just like that. Screw that down. I know you can't see a lot, but there's not a lot of room here. Make sure you don't cross thread it. In it goes. Now, now what I will say to you is with regards to these little tiny car beasts, it's very simple. If I can do it, you can do it. Similar size of my similar size of my hands, look, size of my rockers, eh? I tell you, if I can do it, you can do it. Another little clean, bit of dirt just there. Now a little clean, keep it all clean. Everywhere it's got to be clean. Because if it ain't clean, it ain't no good. Right, now just test to make sure that your, your, your needle is moving. And it's lifting up the, uh, the needle. Yeah, that's moving lovely, we like that. Right, now we're ready for diaphragm. Make sure we put the new diaphragm in and not the old one. Alright, oh, seat that down. That's lovely. And now at the end of the top of the car beat, this is that one. And that's going to go. That's got a little tiny hole on here, just here. See that tiny hole, just there. That hole goes on there. Other way around, Mick, sorry. Come on, Mick. Like that. That all butts down. That got him? I think that's got him. Right. And then get your four big screws and just gently now because your diaphragm is underneath there so you don't want to just be pushing them through because you'll upset your diaphragm. So push these in. And once you've got all four sat in nice and gently, you can nick them four screws up. I'll get that done. I'm not going to bore you doing up four screws. I'll come back to you. Once I've done so. Right, so uh, made a bit more progress. I have now fitted two brand new fuel pipes on here. I buy my fuel pipes off of Amazon or eBay. They're Tigon lines and um, I buy the multi-pack. You get about, I don't know, three or four meters, four different sizes um, for about eight quid or something like that. So all you've got to remember now is when you put this carby back on, it goes back on correctly and there is an impulse hole just here. See that impulse hole? It's really, really important, guys. And that impulse hole lines up with that on there. If it don't line up, it ain't gonna run. Tell you that right now for nada, right? So that all goes on. Where's that stud gone? And it's the stud, all right. That goes on there like that. Now, my, my fuel in is this one here. So that's gotta be fitted onto that line just there. And my return is a slightly smaller one, and that's going to go onto there just like that. So brand new fuel lines on the end now. Oh, cool, that's lovely. With that on, we can now um, put the, uh, the carburetor box back on, which would be that way like so. That just sits in there like that. Pull that stuff back out again, Mick. There's an air crankcase breather pipe here too, guys. That's got to go onto there and onto there. It's quite important too, that is. Ask me how important it is. Uh, now, that's going to push that stud in every time I do that. But that little breather pipe's got to go on first. That's one of the important jobs. There you go, that's on there. Oh, there's a bit of a buckler put on, keep on, whilst fitting all the rest of it pieces on it. All right, that's all on. Crankcase breather's on. Pull that stud out so a touch more if I can get it, good. And then we've got a little tiny plate we, we took off earlier on. Remember that little tiny plate? <coughs> That'll go on like that. That's it. And then a little tiny eight mil nut on it. Another little tiny eight mil nut without pushing that stud in. Right. Eight mil socket and just gently, gently pull that up. Just till it's roughly hand tight. Once that's done, you can then just nick that up with a little tiny ratchet. Not too tight, you don't have to hang on it, but it wants to be well sealed. Right, before we go any further, we need to make sure we hook the throttle up. So turn the trimmer around. I'll try and face it to you guys so you can see what's going on. 
around to here. And again, all we're going to do is we'll grab hold of this throttle pipe, put that in, and then, like I say, now this this throttle will only go round on one way, okay? Because this little tiny um, throttle connector will have a bevel one side and a narrow space the other. So that's the narrow space facing up and the slightly wider bevel end to it where the cable goes in has a slightly wider hole. So it goes around like that. And then we're just gonna turn the throttle on. It's gonna turn that around. Oh, yeah, turn it around just slightly, like that. Slide that into place, let go of it. And it's gotta sit up, actually up inside that hole just there. Once it goes, we know we're on a winner. Okay, so it's now in. And once that's in place, we're gonna just push that cable in. It's gonna do up this little tiny 10 mil. Get my 10 mil spanner out. It's gonna nick that up. This can go on before the, um, the box if you want to. But this only just holds it into place. It's not to life or death as in which, which order you do it in, but it needs to just be sat nice and still. Sorry for knocking. All right, let's just test that. Beautiful. Right, one of the last things to put on just air filter. There's a little bit of oil on my air filter. I'm just gonna squeeze that out because um, I think it's just got, it's been collecting oil for a little while. So I think this is where it hasn't been running right. So I'm just gonna squeeze that out because that will affect how much air it can actually suck in. So I'm just cleaning up, just got a sponge. That's what I'm doing. And literally I'm just caressing the, uh, the filter just to get some of that oil out. That's what I'm doing, just squeezing it and you'll see the oil coming. You can put petrol on there, it's no problem if you want to do that, but we'll try the oil first. And that's got three prongs, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that just go on. I think it goes on that way, that way, one or the other, that way. Just sits on the prongs, like that, feed it in. Like we like that. And then this one here, it's got little tiny, little tiny hinges on the door. Goes on that side there first, all the way around, clips into place, and that's it done. So that should be our Honda now finished. Right, so let's have a little go on this, shall we? Let's see what it do. So choke it all the way forward. We're gonna choke it and we're gonna prime it. We're getting fuel through. We're gonna turn it on. Now remember last time. When I ran it uh, on full revs, it then just cut out. So, turn it on, it's on choke. Oop. First pull, it's always encouraging. Field of oil, so I'm going to just get an oil change anyway. Just how I showed you. Happy with that. I still never think should do. So there you go, one Honda HHH25, now up and running, quick carburetor clean, bish bash bosh. Okay, so there you go, quick little video for an HHH25 um, Honda two, uh, four stroke, actually not two stroke. Um, all it wants is a quick carburetor clean, new diaphragm, and away it went. And I won't need to drag the oil out of mine because mine has been overfilled. Um, not by a lot, but um, over oiling is, is not good for a machine. It's just as bad as under oiling, actually. So make sure you drain all the oil out, tip the machine off on its end, 
um, and then fill it up to the bottom of the threads, not the tops. Once it's been filled up, do the cap up and you're good to go. And check that regularly, because if it all goes down low on those four strokers, you're gonna be in serious trouble and you're looking for a new, a new engine or new cam. So don't, don't not check the oil. Check the oil regularly, I tell you, because the mistakes have been made. But anyway, there you go. It runs as it should do, starts, stops, and all the rest of it. So we've got to sharpen the blades and uh, yeah, good to go. So if I saw a video of Mixed Mars and Mer Man, then hit the subscribe button and whack the old bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be notified next time I upload another video. And I look forward to you guys and guys next time on Mixed Mars and Mer Man. But until then, don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy.